so hello everyone welcome to my channel once again so today i'm going to solve the problem number 2 on the flexural uh, on the topic of flexural strength of a pre stressed concrete beam let's start the question uh, reading uh, the question a pre tension t section has a flange which is 300 mm wide 200 mm thick the rib mean the web is 150 mm wide by 350 mm deep the effective depth of the cross section is 500 mm given area of pre stressing steel equal to 200 mm square fck equal to 550 newton per mm square fp mean the pre stressing steel stress 1600 newton per millimeter square estimate the ultimate moment capacity of the t section using is code regulation well so th this is the section which has been given in the question and the dimensions which have been provided is a uh, 300 millimeter wide of the flange 200 millimeter thickness of the flange where the width, width of the web is 150 mm and the depth is 350 mm and the effective depth is 500 mm so these are the data which has been provided fck 50 newton per mm square fp 1600 newton per mm square area of pre stressing tendons 200 mm square b and d 300 and 500 mm respectively so here we are actually solving an unsymmetrical section mean we have already solved a symmetrical section for that reason it was not that much complicated to evaluate the value of xu but in here we need to know that whether the xu mean the neutral axis depth lies in the flange or outside the flange in order to know that thing we need to know this form well before describing this uh, form let me uh, just tell you what does it implies ap is the area of pre stressing tendon and apw is area of pre stressing steel for web and apf is area of pre stressing steel for flange well as you can see here not nothing uh, none of a tendon is provided in flange separately or in web separately so why this equation has been given well so because this pre stressing steel should be act by this section so this section is assembled with this flange portion and and the web portion so actually these two factors is implying the contributing portion of the area to the flange mean the contributing portion of the pre stressing area to the flange plus plus the contributing portion of the pre stressing steel area to the web should be equal to the total area of the pre stressing tendon okay so um, uh, it is provided that the area of a pre stressing steel for flange mean for this portion the equation will be 0.45 fck b minus bw into df by fp or we can write it down as 0.45 fck by fp into b minus bw into df so here this is the actual area mean b minus bw mean this is b and this is bw this is b and this portion is bw so subtracting this two this portion will remain 
so this portion into the df so here what is df this is the df so the area of this and this into the fck divided by fp into 0.4p we will uh, we will be be able to calculate the value of apf so 0.45 into 50 50 means here b minus bw uh, sorry fck 50 where b minus bw is 300 minus 150 and df by fp is 200 divided by 1600 so this is the amount of the area of pre-stressing steel for flange so we know this value we know this value so by putting the value over here and here we will be able to know the value of apw so the apw will be 200 minus 421.87 as you can see that it should be the total accumulation of this two area should be equal to the ap but here we are getting apw to be minus 221.87 millimeter square so this easily implies that the neutral axis does not lies on the web it does not lies on the web it is definitely lying in the flange portion so hence this is lying in the flange portion we will be calculating this as the um, as same as we have calculated the rectangular section by uh, so by checking the effective reinforcement ratio from the is code is 1343 1980 appendix b so here the ratio the reinforcement ratio will be 0 0.042 so after putting all the value fp ap fck b d okay so from after knowing this value from table 11 is 1343 the corresponding values of fpu by 0.87 fp will be 1 and xu by d will be 0 0.09 so actually we, we we got this from by interpolating we we don't know the direct uh, amount or the value for 0 0.042 in the uh, table in is code there was only 0 0.025 and the next one was 0 0.05 so in between this 0 0.042 lies so interpolating this we have got this value now putting the value in the corresponding uh, data if pu should be equal to 1 into 0 0.87 into fp mean the pre-stressing stress of the tendons which has been given in the question as 1600 equal to 1392 newton per millimeter square so this is the ultimate tensile stress in the tendon and the neutral axis depth by the effective depth xu by d we have got 0 0.09 so xu will be 0 0.09 into d is 500 which will be 45 millimeters so definitely you can see that this will definitely lie within the flange so the moment of resistance of the section assuming that the neutral axis falls within the flange is correct so the moment of resistance for the section is fpu into ap into d minus 0.42 xcu where fpu is the ultimate tensile stressing tendon ap is the area of pre-stressing tendon d is the effective depth and xcu is the neutral axis depth so after putting all the value we have we will get the 
value of moment of resistance to be 133.93 kilonewton meter so now there will be a question that if that section were proven to be lies in the web then what would you have done so in that case you would have to evaluate a p w into f p divided by b w d f c k so here that a p will be a p w f p will remain same b would be b w d into f c k so after knowing this ratio let assume the ratio should be something uh, will lie within uh, something amount of x so we will get this value at first then we will automatically get the value of fpu divided by 0.87 fp and xu by d from the is code then after knowing these values we will get to know that fpu and this xu so our new moment of resistance moment of resistance of flanged section mean or, or you can say t section where xu is greater than df mean the xu will be greater than the depth of flange in that case the moment of resistance will be mu equal to fpu into apw into d minus 0.42 xu plus 0.45 fck into b minus bw into df into d minus 0.5 df if we just draw the diagram suppose this is the t section where this is b this is capital df this is suppose here the pre stressing c steel this is the effective depth this is bw then the stress diagram will be here it is actually the force diagram suppose the neutral axis lies here so it will be fpu into ap w in this case you can see that the xu is greater than df in that case it will be fpu into apw here this will be 0.45 fck as similar to the rcc block and this distance will be 0.42 of xu where this will be the forcing that this will be the act of force and for this flange section only for this flange section it is 0.45 fck and here in this block from the centroid it will be 0.45 fck b minus bw mean b minus bw mean this portion this portion 
into point four five F C K into D F. So this will be the force and the force acting the lever arm will be D minus point five of this actually this is a rectangular block so actually the depth will be the centroidal depth will be the half of this distance so uh, so this distance is df so this portion is will be df by 2 or 0.5 df so this is total is small d so small d minus this point df is this liver arm and the acting force is here fp into ap so just because this is only the flange section so it will be the pre-stressing force into the area the contributing area of the flange section so by this diagram we have calculated this moment of resistance actually the ultimate moment of resistance of the flange section in which the neutral axis that neutral axis fall outside of the flange is computed by combining the moment resistance of the web and the flange portion web and the flange portion and considering the stress block the, these are the stress block provided here we will calculate this moment of resistance to be this so you will solve this problem if that xu uh, is greater than df uh, was the uh, the case in that case you will apply this formula thank you for watching this video